Alright guys, so we're back with episode 6, and in this video, I want to talk about conditional statements, okay? So, quite often when we write programs, so far, every program that we've written, everything is executed in just sequential order. It's There's just one direction, everything is being executed, okay? However, there are times where, you know, not just us human beings, but we might need to have the computer make some kind of decision, right? As human beings, we often make a lot of decisions, and those decisions are based on certain conditions, right? For example, uh, sometimes we say, okay, if I get paid today, then I will go out to the movies. If I get paid today, then I'll buy everyone dinner. If it rains today, then I'll stay indoors. If it doesn't, then I will clean. Okay, these are conditions, and those conditions can either be true or they can be false. There's only two values to it. There's only two possible outcomes. It's either, it's either you do get paid or you don't. It's either it rains or it doesn't. Right? There's no in between, there's no middle, right? If, even if it's cloudy, did it rain? No. Okay, so you're going to do whatever you had set for the else case. Okay, so these are decisions that we as human beings make. But what about the computer? The computer itself also needs to make decisions, okay? And quite often in a computer program, you're always going to have decisions being made. And that's going to control the execution. It's going to control the flow of the program, okay? A lot of times when you fill out these online forms, it might ask you, uh, you know, what your age is, okay? And depending on how old you are, like depending on what you enter in, it'll display different options for you. So let's say, for example, if you are going on a website and you're trying to determine what rides you're eligible for, let's say you enter age 12 years old. It might give you no options. It might say, oh, you're too young to ride any of the rides in Six Flags, for example. Let's say you put 16. Then... If the user enters 16 for their age, it's going to display all of the rides that are eligible that 16 year olds are eligible for. And likewise, if you enter 18 years old, then it's going to display all of the rides that 18 year olds are eligible for, which probably is all of them because I think uh, I don't even think there's that many restrictions when it comes to age for amusement parks, anyways. But you guys get the idea, right? Certain conditions give us certain control of the program. Okay, the computer makes a decision. If that condition is met, then we're going to do whatever we want in that block of code. Okay, and, and again, all this will make much more sense when we actually look at, you know, what it looks like in code. Okay, so let's go ahead and before we actually get started with conditional statements, okay, we're going to actually talk about relational operators. Okay, because conditions, again, they evaluate to either true or false. There's only there's only two values, true or false. Okay, but let's talk about relational operators first. So there are six relational operators. You've probably seen the four of these in mathematics. Although the greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, typically there is a bar underneath it, like an underscore underneath it. In this case, in programming, it's just the... Uh, the angle bracket with the, the the less than sign with the equal sign right next to it, okay? But the first one, less than, okay, very straightforward, is 5 less than 6. True. Yes, it is. Perfect. Greater than. Is 5 greater than 6? False, right? 5 is not greater than 6. 5 is less than 6. Less than or equal to. Is 5 less than or equal to 6? True. Is 6 less than or equal to 6? True. Is 6 less than 6? False. See how that works? Relational operators pretty much uh, give us a relation. It allows us to take two operands, and it allows us to get a relation between those two. That's why they're called relational operators, right? What is the relation between 5 and 6? Well, 5 is less than 6, right? Is 5 greater than 6? No. Is 5 greater than or equal to 6? Nope, that's false. Is 5 equal to 6? Nope. Is 5 not equal to 6? True. Hopefully that makes sense, and you know, again, we're going to be dealing with this a lot, so don't worry so much about it, but these are just the basic, the, these are the only relational operators, okay? And again, as I mentioned before, you may have seen a lot of these operators in an elementary math class. Okay, the two that stand out, though, are the equals equals sign and the not equals sign, okay? So, equals equals, typically in programming, right? This isn't just JavaScript exclusive, this is just programming in general. It means equal to, right? In mathematics, you would just use one equal sign, right? You would do something like 5 equals 5, and that would be true, right? However, in programming, the the single equal sign means an, is, is an assignment operator, 
Okay, and again, when we talk about variables, we use the equal sign. I may have forgotten to mention this. I do apologize. But the equal sign is pretty much called the assignment operator. And that's what we use to assign values or expressions to a variable or a declaration. Okay, what I mean by that is when we get on to, you know, function declarations, you'll understand. Okay. Um, and yeah, so likewise, uh, not equals. So notice how I'm saying not because that's what the exclamation mark means. Exclamation mark means not. And when we say not, that's basically the negation operator. Okay. And in math, usually you'd use like the equal sign w with a slash over it. In this case, we just use an exclamation mark with an equal sign, which just means not equal. Okay. And it's just the exclamation mark and it's a negation operator. Okay. Cool. And what that means is it basically negates the whole uh, value of the, the whole expression value, the whole Boolean value. Okay. And again, we'll talk about that, you know, once we get into the examples, I just kind of want to like, you know, go through these slides one by one. Okay. And again, I've mentioned all of these examples already. We use relational operators to form Boolean expressions. Okay. And remember a Boolean value can either be true or false, but not both. Okay. Same thing with conditions. Conditions can only be true or false, right? It's either this or that, not both. Cool. All right, so now let's actually combine all of our knowledge of relational operators to form conditional statements, okay? So if we want to control the flow of a program, we're going to use what's called an if statement, okay? Or an if, else, if, if, else. There's a there's three different times. We're going we're gonna to go through all of it. So let's do this. Uh, let me create a file called conditional.js. Let's do this. Let's declare a variable called uh, my age. Let's just say, for example, I'm 18 years old. Okay, now let's do this. Let's say if, okay, so this is the if statement, and it's followed by a set of parentheses, and inside this parentheses, we need to specify the condition. Okay, and the condition, typically we use a relational operator. For example, if my age is less than 21, right? So we're providing a relation between the value of my age with the number, with the literal value 21. And what we're saying is, okay, First of all, is my age less than 21? That is true. Right? 18 is, in fact, less than 21. So since that's true, now notice how after this set of this closing parentheses over here, it's followed by a set of opening uh, opening and closing. These are called curly braces. Like they're, you know, have a little squiggly. These are called curly braces, okay? Now this over here is basically, you can think of it as a scope, but sometimes I like to call it a block because everything that we write inside this these curly braces is are all of these all of these programming statements are going to be executed conditionally and i'll explain what that means so let's just do this let's just say if my age is less than 21 we're going to say you are not eligible to drink okay and of course we can do other things too let's just write a simple single line comment do other stuff but this is just simple for now okay now watch this let's do node conditional .js. You are not eligible to drink. See how that works? My age is less than 21. Now, let's say if I did this, let's do console.log. We can even log these expressions as well, these conditional expressions. And you're going to see it's going to say true. No, it's going to say false. I'm sorry. Wait, 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 what? Oh, wait, it's supposed to be 21. Sorry. True, right? And because that's true, this is happening. This is being conditionally executed. Okay, we can also do other things too. We can, you know, for example, we can, uh, I don't know, we can do a bunch of other stuff. We can say constant log, uh, you are going to be kicked out of the bar, right? We can have a bunch of different programming statements inside over here that can be conditionally executed when this condition is true. Now let's do this. Let's say, let's change our age to 22. Right? And if I run this program, you're going to see that nothing happens. Nothing is being logged to the console. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why is that the case? Think of it like this, right? This condition now, since we changed the value of my age to 22, okay, so is my age less than 21? That is false. Now, because this is false, we're going to ignore everything. We're going to ignore all the programming statements inside this block, inside this chunk. Okay? And we're not going to do anything else. Okay, now let's say this. Let's say if they are eligible to drink, let's print out a message for them. But we want to do it conditionally, right? Because let's say, for example, if I did this, if I did constant log, right? Because right now I could do this. I could say, you are eligible to drink, 
right? And this would, you know, work, but it wouldn't work semantically, right? Because let's say if I change this to 18, right? This would still print out, you are eligible to drink, okay? Fortunately, we have what's called else, which is another key reserve keyword. And basically all that means is, okay, if this condition fails, right? We're gonna jump to the else case, right? Kind of like if this, okay? or else something else, right? So if this is true, do this. Otherwise, else, do something else, right? And in order, you must have an if statement before an else, right? In order to use the else statement, you must have it following an if or an else if, okay? And I'll get to that in just a sec. So else, let's just say const.log, you are eligible to drink. And now watch this. So since my age is currently 18, the if statement is going to be conditionally executed it's, since it satisfies the condition. You are not eligible to drink. You are going to be kicked out of the bar. Okay. Now let's change this to 21. You are eligible to drink because 21 is not less than 21. Since that's false, we go to else. Now let's let's do this. Let's 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 incorporate else if right because we so far we've only used if and then else right. But there's also the else if statement or the, you know, I guess you can call it a keyword, right? And this is very useful when we want to check a second condition in case if the previous condition fails. Okay, so let's say, for example, my age, so it's not less than 21, but we are 21, right? So let's say, what if we are 21, right? If we are 21, let's give us a discount. Let's say this, so if my age is equal to 21, so remember, we're using the equals equals relational operator because we're checking to see if my age is equal to 21. Okay, so we use two equal signs. So if we're equal to 21, let's just say this, let's say you are eligible for a discount. Awesome. And if we do that, you're gonna see you are eligible for a discount. Perfect, just like that. Okay, now obviously, um, let's say this. Let's say for example, if we're 22 years old, right? Think about how the flow of execution changes, right? My age, 22 is not less than 21, so that's false, okay? So we're gonna ignore everything inside this chunk of code. Now, we go to the else if case, right? We're checking this condition. Is 22 equal to 21? That is not true, right? That is not true. Okay, now since there's no other condition we wanna check, it goes straight to the else case. The else case is kinda like the default case, right? If every condition before the else case fails, the else case is just going to execute over here. So now if I execute this, you can guess, it's gonna say you are eligible to drink. Now, of course, you can have a bunch of different else if clauses right before. So you can say 22, do something else. And since we are 22, this would execute and they would ignore everything else. So so think of it like this, right? As long if whichever, whichever case Whichever case is satisfied first, that'll execute and it'll ignore the rest of the elsives or else, right? So since, so since, uh, let's go change this back to 21. So since this else if was, since the condition of this else if was satisfied, it's not going to execute this else, okay? Since if we change this to 18, this if condition, my age less than 21, this is going to be satisfied, so everything else is going to be ignored. Okay, that is how conditional branches or conditional statements work. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a better idea of how you can change the flow of execution when it comes to your program. So not everything is linear. It can go, you know, a bunch of different directions, right? It's kind of like when you're driving on the interstate or the highway, right? You can either, you know, turn, you can either make a right turn, right, to exit the lane, or uh, you can, you know, change change lanes or whatever, there's different decisions that you need to make, right? Let's say if you're driving, um, if there's a car to your left, stay in your lane. Else, change lane to the left, okay? Or we can say if there is a car in the right lane and there's a car in the left lane, stay in center lane. Or you can make some other decisions such as, you know, speed up and do something else, right? There's a whole bunch of different things that you could do. Okay, let me see how much time we have left. We have a... Uh... You know, I guess we have a decent amount of time. Let's 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 write a little bit more complex conditions, right? Because so far right now, we've only written one simple condition. We've said my age equals equals twenty one. But what if we want to compare two values, right? And these these this is where we're going to use what's called 
uh, Boolean operators. Okay, I don't think we're covering that over here because so far we've only done just simple conditions. So actually, you know what? I think in the next video we'll cover that. So I'm going to end this video right over here. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, Boolean operators. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.